Greetings, Earthlings. I'm Robert Simmons, the author of the Book of Stones, uh, co-author of the Book of Stones, author of Stones of the New Consciousness and the Pocket Book of Stones, uh, and also co-author with my wife, Kathy Helen Warner, of Moldavite, Starborn Stone of Transformation. And I'm here today with Leo McPhee, the manager of Heaven and Earth, and we're going to talk about my favorite, my very first favorite stone, Moldavite. So what do you think, Leo? Is this, is this, how do you feel about doing this today? I'm really excited about it. It's something I've been looking forward to for a couple of months since I started here because Moldavite was a particularly powerful stone for me, which maybe I'll talk about later. But first, you know, I want to ask you a question that I think is very interesting is what, how did you meet Moldavite? How did you come mm. upon it? How mm -hmm. did this all start? 25 plus years ago. Well, that is one of my favorite stories to tell because it really has a lot to do with the way my whole career in terms of working with crystals and starting Heaven and Earth and even Mary and Kathy got going. Um, this was, it started back in about 1984. It was 1984 and it was the summer of 1984 and I was, in those days, I was a jewelry designer and I was uh, selling my wares on Cape Cod. I was going to the stores and selling my jewelry designs. And um, I was thinking I was kind of frustrated because I was competing with overseas manufacturers and I was selling the same old thing everybody else sold, diamonds, rubies, emeralds, sapphires. And I wasn't really moved by that. You know, I had a spiritual side to myself that was questing and reading you know, Alan Watts and Carlos Castaneda and books like that where I was trying to like get spiritually awake even though I didn't really know where I was going in terms of that in those days and also I was, I was so I wondered why what's my career got to do with what I'm really interested in which is the mm -hmm. spiritual opening and um, I was thinking you know what could I make that's different? What can I make that's not what everybody else is making? And I was, this all happened as I was driving to Cape Cod and you know I had this suddenly as I was sort of thinking about that I had this image come into my mind like all at once and it was of a gold comet with a meteorite in the head and little diamonds in the tail as mm. a jewelry design. Right? And uh, I thought to myself that's cool. That's something nobody else has ever done yet and it uses a meteorite, which I hadn't seen in jewelry in those days. Mm. Um, and it's a comet was perfect because Halley's Comet was going to come in another year. Mm. Yes, that's so, right. So, you know, for my, for my mind, in, in the mindset I was in as a jewelry designer, it was like a great idea. And I got really, you know, enthused and kind of forgot about anything except, you know, how can I make this happen? And I completely missed my turn and went like, an hour past my appointment on Cape Cod, you know, and I went way up the Cape to a different town, and I suddenly kind of woke up to where I was and said, oh my gosh, I missed my appointment, you know, and, but I thought, I was near the house of a friend of mine, and I thought, you know what, I'm skipping my appointment, I'll call him and tell him, and I'm going to go see my friend, because my friend had done a selling project through, the, through a credit card company where he had had a, an astrology pendant that put your astro astrological chart on a pendant. And he was, um, he was really successful with that. And I thought, well, I've got kind of a, you know, a specialized idea here too. It's a, like a commemorative idea for Halley's Comet, mm. a real meteorite in a comet, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just w pulled over and went to his house. And as we were talking about the idea, I said, do you think you could get me in with this credit card company? You know, do you think this is a good idea? And he said, I think it's a great idea. But really, you should use a Moldavite, not a metal meteorite in that mm. comet. And I had never heard that word before. And I said, what's a Moldavite? And he said, you know, I, I think I got a magazine here that I read about it in. And he went to his office and he dug around in his papers. And a few minutes later, he came out and he had this magazine. It was the Lapidary Journal from 1951. Wow. 58. 58. Wow. So that was 26 years old, that magazine. But it was still there in his office. Mm -hmm. And it was the only lapidary journal he had in his office. It just happened to be something he'd saved. So, you know, there's synchronicity in that. And uh, he showed me the article. 
and it was written by a man named George Bruce in 1958 and it talked about not only that there was a gem from outer space I should probably hold one up and let people see yes for who have never seen it you know this is what a moldavite looks like and it is a glassy green stone that fell uh, in a meteor shower or was formed in a meteoric impact uh, in Czechoslovakia uh, about 14.8 million years ago and that was some of what I read in the article mm -hmm. was you know what this stuff was and how where it was found and how long ago it was formed or how long ago it fell out of the sky right and I got very captured by the idea because Moldavite was the only gem that ever fell from the sky mm. you know it, it's you can't see it when you look at raw pieces but here with a gem you can kind of see that it is um, transparent inside it's deep green color but it's transparent inside so it actually makes a good gem when you cut it yes so this man George Bruce was a gemologist and it was his favorite stone of his whole career in gemology. He had all, spent 30 years trying to get people interested in Moldavite. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, and so in the article that he wrote in 1958 was another was part of his work in trying to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'll set these down now, but just to say that Moldavite is not only a rock and it's not only a meteorite, it's also a gem. And I was reading all that in the article. And as I read the article, I got kind of excited you know, I thought, this is the stone I should put in this pendant. But more than that, I had this little tingle, like, come up the back of my neck, which I wasn't used to, you know, and it felt, I can't say it any other way, I felt like there was some destiny involved. Mm. You know, I felt like, you know, to say it dramatically, the curtain of destiny fell over me, you know. And I felt like I'm going to do something with this stone. Mm. And it was this intuitive moment of feeling like it's it's even more important than I am thinking of in terms of this one project. But I didn't know that. It was just a feeling. Right. So the man's address was at the top of the article, Stone Mountain, Georgia, from 1958. And after I read it, I thought, I've got to get my hands on some Moldavite somehow. So maybe this guy's still alive. Maybe mm. I can reach him. Mm. So called information. And they gave me a phone number. I called the phone number <clears throat> and rang. And then pretty soon this real old man answered the phone. And I said, hello, I'm, I'm Robert Simmons. I've just read your article about Moldavite. <laughs> exactly, you know. This long pause. And then this old man's voice says, you just read my article? Right? <laughs> so we talked for four hours. Wow. Because, yeah, he was, I mean, I was excited. It was brand new to me, but, you know, it was like everything I'd been looking for, you know, consciously, meaning uh, an unusual gemstone, mm -hmm. something from outer space for my comet, but something that nobody else was, you know, wasn't on the radar anywhere. Right. And so as a jewelry designer, that was exciting to me. I wasn't yet any really more than that. I was kind of a spiritual seeker off in the, you know, personal side of my life but in terms of stones I didn't know there were crystal energies or anything like that at that time mm. so anyway we talked for four hours he ended up sending me my first samples and you know I just got obsessed with making this comet pendant for Halley's Comet with Moldavite mm -hmm. and the process went on you know like I got in touch with the credit card company buyers and I went to New York with my designs and they liked the idea and gave me a go ahead, you know, to do some more designs. And, you know, we got further and further down that path. Mm. And I was, you know, very, it was like I was still doing my regular jewelry, but I was really most interested in this. Yes. Um, so then, you know, in that process, in the first six months, one of the things that Moldavite does started happening to me. And that is a kind of a transformation of the self to one, not so much the transformation of the self, but of my activity in life to where I was doing things that were a little bit more towards my destiny or a little bit more towards a higher path. Mm -hmm. And yes. I found myself just like spontaneously doing things like, you know, I stopped drinking. Mm -hmm. I stopped, at that time I stopped eating red meat. 
I mean, it would just kind of happened, you know. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I started um, connecting with some new people who were sort of more spiritually awake people. Mm. And one of those was uh, the woman who ended up being my wife, Kathy. Yes. So I don't know if you want to go, in, if you'd like me to go into that story, but the way I we th- met. Yeah, I think it's, it's part of, it's an important part of that early time, I think. Well, it is, it is to me. And she was the one who understood more about the purpose of this stone that I was so excited about. Right. That's why I think it's important. Yeah. So, so George Bruce sent me samples of Moldavite. I had like three or four pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, one, you know, I, I met Kathy uh, at a party for someone that I didn't know and she didn't like, you know, but we were there anyway, kind of at the behest of mutual friends and we met and we were felt a connection with each other. And you know, a few days later, she came over to my house for dinner um, and uh, she gave me my first tarot card reading, Interesting. which actually just, you know, as a moment of you know, incidental information, the tarot card reading showed her that we were going to be married. Um, and it didn't show me that because I didn't never had a tarot card reading before, and she was mum about that part of what it meant. Mm-hmm. Um, and it sort of shocked her. She wasn't like too thrilled about the idea of marrying me just from the first get go there. Um, but you know, she sort of saw that it was happening, and uh, so we did start a relationship. Then you know, the the next when by the time she went home that night, um, I wanted to call her and see her and so forth and when I did finally get together with her uh, for our first date that's when I showed her a piece of moldavite because mm. by that time I'd understood that she was a crystal lover right and she actually you know did crystal layouts and she sold crystals and she and she had this idea this to me very weird idea that stones were spiritual mm. I mean I thought I mean in those days I thought how is that possible so these are rocks you know how are they spiritual now it's my life but in those days yes. I wasn't there yes so you know um, so so she held a piece of moldavite that I gave her you know I said here you be Kathy yes okay so I said here you you're into these crystals and stuff you know hold this and see what you think now she closed her eyes mm-hmm. and she just went you know quiet and she stood there and she just stayed quiet with her eyes closed, you know, and it took about, I don't know, it seemed like five minutes before she opened her eyes again. I thought, maybe she's going to sleep, you know, I was just not, I wasn't up on meditation or anything. Right. So, anyway, she opened her eyes and she s- said that she'd had the experience of actually, uh, her consciousness went out into the stars mm. and that she looked back at the earth from that viewpoint out in the cosmos and at that point she was given the information that Moldavite is a stone to help people ground spiritual light on the earth Mm. and help help the earth and help humanity by becoming uh, more connected to the the light of uh, you know you might say of the divine or of the central sun um, but of the source of light for the earth Mm. and she said that the earth was in a way, because of human activity, depleted of light and needed more. So it would nourish the earth if people carried or wore Moldavite and sort of allowed that grounding to go through into the earth. Mm. Interesting. I forgot that part. Yeah. So, you know, she um, she became my partner like right away. You know, from the time we had that first date, we never dated anybody else and we were like working together. Mm. You know, she quit the job that she was doing and we started working together with my jewelry company and we also were trying to do the Comet project together Um, and we got quite a ways down the line with that and then you know to the point where uh, the the company said yes we're gonna do the project get ready to make 60,000 pendants yes 60,000 pendants so uh, I but I had to go into Hawk you know, I had to I had to absolutely mortgage my house a third time. I had to borrow money from all my friends that would do that mm. to get enough money. It was about sixty thousand dollars to buy enough Moldavite to do that project. Right, right. right. And then 
the company called up my house one day when I wasn't there, but Kathy was there, and they said, one of the vice presidents doesn't like the idea of a Halley's Comet pendant projects canceled. So that was a bad moment for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't know about it until I came home. And Kathy, who, you know, I love the way that she's able to roll with what happens and really feel like whatever happens is for the good. Mm -hmm. Because she greeted me at the door with, the vice president canceled the project, but don't worry, it means something better is going to happen. So, you know, I had to take that on faith. Yes. But it kind of did. And more stuff occurred, you know. I mean, do you kind of keep, keep going with this? Yeah, I think it's important just to cover this initial part of how it, you know, blossomed, you could say. Well, and it, it, it changed me. And Kathy and I decided we would try to do it on our own. Mm. And, um, you know, some good things happened. Some good things, synchronicities kind of helped us. One thing happened is the Boston Globe heard about us and heard about this project for Haley's Common, and they sent a reporter to see us. Mm. And, you know, we told them about our whole plan, including that we had decided by that time that we wanted to open a store. Mm. Um, so that was put in there. And we had also, what a great, what a, what a terrible and great thing happened. The first Thanksgiving that Kathy and I were together, when we were still kind of struggling and trying to recover from the project being canceled and make the rest of the jewelry sell, on Thanksgiving Day, we had all of our regular jewelry and our Moldavite jewelry on consignment in a shop. Mm. And we were going to be allowed to come in there for Christmas and sell our wares. Mm. And on the day after Thanksgiving, when we got there, there had been a break-in. Mm. And all of my jewelry was stolen. Right. Except the Moldavite. Oh, wow. That's right. I forgot that right? part. So that was devastating because I owed money on all that stuff. You know, it was really, really, like, hard to take. Mm. And also I'm thinking, why didn't they take the Moldavite? Right. Know? So, you know, Kathy being a tarot <laughs> reader, you know, she did his card spread about it. And we kept getting that the outcome... What we did, I did, I asked her to do like four times because it showed the devastating thing ha that happened, and the outcome card showed strength. Mm. And the last thing I wanted to hear was, "This will make you stronger." You know, forget about it. I wanted my stuff back. You know, yes. Yes. but that that's not that's not the way it went. Mm. So, you know, we were left with literally nothing to work with but moldavite. Yes. And that, from my perspective now, I think. That's the universe saying, go this way. Yes. Don't go that way anymore. Go this way. And I needed that because I would have, uh, being a cancer, you know, I would have been hanging on to my security of, I can make a living with my rubies and diamonds, so I better... Do all this other stuff on the on side. On the side, right. Yes. We were left with nothing to work with but Moldavite. So, you know, we struggled. We found a few little things we could put in that store and sell them at Christmas and we borrowed some things to sell and we started recouping a little bit of money and we got a little bit of money in the bank account and then uh, Kathy one day when I was out um, heard about there being a new age show like it was a whole life expo or something mm. that we could get a booth in and we would be the crystal booth. Now never mind we didn't have any crystals <laughs> we just had Moldavite um, that was the story that was given to her and she immediately took all the money we had saved and bought the booth, rented the booth at the show. And when I saw her, she said, good news, Bob, we've got a booth. We have no money, but we have a booth. <laughs> so I said, but we have nothing to put in it. She said, don't worry, we will. And indeed that happened. You know, we, we borrowed crystals from uh, one of my Cape Cod jewelry stores that also sold crystals and we mm. managed to get a booth full of crystals mm. for free to on you know on loan yeah. to sell and then pay him for and we had moldavite and the boston globe article came out like right before the show wow and wow. it was a full page article about the moldavite and haley's comet and our project it was like a wow. huge gift and talk about another nudge from the universe to do this with moldavite mm. So at that show was the first time any of the people in the metaphysical community um, had seen Moldavite. And there were a fair number that came curious about it because of the Boston Globe article. Mm -hmm. But also the people that were, you know, coming around holding their hands over the crystals, 
started doing that over the Moldavite, and they would go, wow, you know, that stuff is strong. Mm. Boy, do I feel a lot of heat and things like that. Right. And also, people were actually walking by, not even intending to stop at our booth, and the Moldavite would grab them, you know, energetically, yep. and get them to, like, say, what the heck is this? So that show was the launch of our whole enterprise. Like, wow. we did so well. We sold, you know, I don't want to talk about dollars all the time, but we sold like seven or $8,000, which to us that time was Fort Knox. Yes, you know? yes, yes. And so that gave us enough to keep going. And we announced that we were going to the show. We were going to open the store uh, on April 12th. Wow. And that was going to be then, by that time, 1986. And we got married on April 11th, 1986, and opened the store the next day. So Moldavite is integrally involved in our relationship, our partnership in heaven and earth, Yes. our work together with stones, and the whole kind of meaning of our lives as we've expressed them in the world. Mm. And, you know, the fact that our marriage date and the date of the store opening with Moldavite at its core yes. was the, you know, really like the crystallizing moment when heaven and earth began so to speak yes yes and i just mean heaven and earth the business not heaven and earth the cosmos but you know i do link them yes yeah so that was a mouthful <sighs> yeah but, you know that's, that's how we got going the story yeah. you know it really is because it gives a sense i mean it's it's i i always feel like that story is a perfect depiction of what Moldavite can bring in terms of transformation. Absolutely true. You know, one of the things, if I were, if somebody were to ask me, what are the qualities of Moldavite? And of mm -hmm. course, at the beginning, when we first started the store, I didn't really know other than what Kathy had said. Right. What the qualities of Moldavite would be for anybody. Right. Um, and I hadn't really realized the connection between my own accelerated transformation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got moved literally from a mainstream jewelry designer career into a metaphysical crystal and stone selling career. Right. I changed my, you know, eating habits and my drinking habits and my found my partner. Mm -hmm. All this happened so quickly. Yes. From the time that this Moldavite, the first piece, got into my hands. Yes. And, you know, that would be one thing if it was just me. But what happened as we started selling the stone is that people reported this accelerated evolution yes. over and over again. And it was just like somebody, you know, I don't know, like turned up the amperage in terms of uh, the way that somebody's life was moving. Yes. So that things, yes. would, you know, in every way speed up. And not just speed up, but also things that needed to happen, mm -hmm. happen. Like when, when we first were getting the book together, which wasn't that long after. We published that book in 1988. Right. Um, when we were getting the book together, we had letters from quite a few people who had bought Moldavite from us and who had uh, experienced a lot of different things, but with a kind of a core similarity. Right. A theme. Right. And the, and the similarity of people's experiences with Moldavite tended to be they felt it energetically in the body as heat mm -hmm. um, or they sometimes would become lightheaded um, there would be some people would feel vibration mm -hmm. not everybody felt something because not everybody feels things in the body you know as vibration or currents like I do and like you do right um, but um, they did that, that sort of thing and and also they would say things in their outer life were changing and changing fast Yes. And things that needed to be let go of seemed to just vanish whether they wanted them to or not. Yes. And things that they needed to attract in order for their life to take on a more meaningful direction and in order for what was supposed to happen in their life to happen mm -hmm. were like magnetized. Yes. So I know I'm, I'm telling you it's about like an things. an accelerator. It is. It's like an accelerator and in certain ways a purifier. Yes. You know, because it, it does its presence seems to have that th effect in people's lives very frequently. Well, I, you know, as everything you're sharing, of course, I'm like the poster child for uh -huh. that experience. I mean, I, 
first came upon Moldavite at Heaven and Earth booth in New York City at a Whole Life Expo. That's right. That's and, how we met. And it was exactly that same thing. I was walking around. I had the intention to find out what this crystal thing was all about. Didn't know anything. You weren't into crystals. Wasn't then. into crystals. No, uh -huh. you know, but saw this booth and just I remember kind of wheeling around pretty much blow by blow exactly what you just said, except you know, I mean, I felt the heat. I also felt like I'd found a piece of home, you know, mm. like something mm. from a place that was familiar to me, but long estranged or something like that. It was very personal. It was very deep. And my life immediately went on like the fast track of mm -hmm. moving across the country, opening up to all kinds of spiritual perspectives and and to the minerals and to crystals, which has continued. I mean, Moldavite was like the, the fire starter, the spark mm -hmm. you know, that just lit this fire in me to, you know, to go deeper with the mineral kingdom. So, I mean, I'm so grateful to you guys mm -hmm. and to Moldavite for that. And so that's why it's extra sweet to be doing this now. yeah yeah an extra uh, an extra significant stone in both of our lives absolutely and yeah absolutely you know i mean if it weren't for moldavite we probably would never have met right exactly and, you know i would have never met your family and you know the many years that we've known each other would and intersected never, and all yeah. the different ways that people in our lives have been connected and so uh, yeah i feel like i'm very much like a my life has been a schematic for a very long view of what you're saying, not just the immediate transformation, but a transformation that keeps going, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of life path. So, you know, in terms of Moldavite getting out to the world, I got another story to talk yes. about, and then I've got another story to talk about in terms of how Moldavite woke me up to feeling stone energies. Yes. But the first one, early on in the, in the time of heaven and earth's starting as a little shop um, we were you know we we're advertising in the regional uh, metaphysical newspapers mm -hmm. and it from the very first month heaven and earth was successful and it was largely due to moldavite because mm -hmm. it became a bit of a sensation mm -hmm. that show was the beginning of it and people talked about it so people would drive from quite a distance to come and and have a look at the moldavite yes and one of the things I was trying to do in those days was to get some documentation from people who were authorities on crystals about what Moldavite was good for. Mm. And I, we sent some to um, a couple who had written a book together uh, about crystals. Mm -hmm. And um, we said, you know, I said, I don't really feel stone energies, but I'm still involved with this. And I'm wondering what you think about this Moldavite. And when they got the Moldavite that we sent them, they called us on the phone immediately. Because, and this is, this is sort of on the out there end of the spectrum in terms of the things that have happened around this stone. Yes. But those two people were channelers. They were doing, you know, connecting with spirit beings and they were getting information. And that's what was sort of the basis of their crystal book. Mm -hmm. When they were, they had been channeled, what they told us when they called was that they had been channeling an alien master uh, like several years before like three or four years before and this being told them one day you will receive as a gift from a stranger a green stone from outer space oh my and when it does it will transform your work wow yeah so you know like anybody else they file that information and go well I don't know what's gonna happen right and then when a green stone from outer space arrived in the mail from a stranger, they got pretty excited. Right. So they called. So interesting and good for us, the grace for us and, and for Moldavites getting out into the world, which seemed to kind of have its own agenda. Mm. When you think about the orchestration of things, you know, the, 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 the theft of all my other stuff and yes. the way that I found Moldavite by accident that day I got inspired and you know the way that connecting with Kathy kind of opened up the door for me to get into the metaphysical world of stones mm. which was where Moldavite needed to go and then you know this story about the alien being and those people getting a Moldavite that I happened just to send them mm -hmm. that's a big string of synchronicity just in the beginning just in the beginning yes and so those people um, 
were very popular speakers in those mm. days in the 80s and they were going around the country giving workshops and maybe three or four hundred five hundred people would come Wow! so at their workshops they were saying the most important new stone everybody should get is moldavite and here's the phone number of the people who are selling it Wow so in wow. our little shop that was about the size of a you know living room um, we were getting phone calls from all over the country, people saying, I got to get some Moldavite. Wow. So, you know, that was a huge boost to both our business and also our ability to find people that were interested in what we were doing. Mm. And that was just kind of grace, you know, that those other people were going around talking about us. Yes. You couldn't have picked better people to do it in terms of the audience that was interested. Right. So... As that happened, you know, people started saying, what do you got in Moldavite? So I started cutting pyramids and I started cutting polished stones and things. And, you know, they wanted um, uh, different things. They wanted jewelry and so forth. Mm -hmm. So there was this impetus, well, maybe we should print a catalog. So we printed a one-page catalog that had Moldavite stuff on one side and crystals on the other side. And we mailed that out to the people who had called us. Mm. And then we started putting little ads in magazines for, you know, Moldavite, get a catalog, you know, and we sent out this one page, which, wow, that was another thing that just got the ball rolling. Yes. And, you know, I mean, it made our business successful and it allowed us to uh, make a living and everything without having to go back to selling ruby emerald diamond stuff yes. that I used to do. Yes. Um, which I thought that's what I was going to do. I thought we would open a little store and Kathy would be there and I'd be running around selling my stuff like I used to. Right. But it completely took over our life. That never happened. No. Yes. So, and the crystals then entered in too. And then combining Moldavite with crystals started in. Mm. Um, and then collecting materials for a book began. Mm. And, you know, we learned more things about Moldavite. We learned about the historical side of it. Yes, which I think you should talk about at some point. Well, maybe you know. this is a good time. Yeah, I think it is. Because, you know, Moldavite is one of those gemstones that has a history. Um, in terms of the scientific side of its history, uh, it fell in a meteor shower about 15 million, 14.8, I think I said, million yes. years ago. And it only fell in one place on Earth, the, the Czech Republic. Uh, the southern part of the Czech Republic, what's that now, the Czech Republic? Right. Is southern Bohemia. And it's in a very small area. Mm. This meteor crashed there 14.8 million years ago, and the stones that spewed down out of the sky um, were in an area of no more than 60 square kilometers. Mm. So, you know, that's not very big. You know, a lot of towns are bigger than that. Right, um, right. Or cities, anyway, are bigger than that. Um, so, it was found by farmers in their fields. Like that was the way that Moldavite was discovered by people in modern times. But it has been treasured by people for many thousands of years. Mm. Um, Neolithic people, like 25,000 years ago, were wearing raw Moldavite in amulets and they were making ceremonial arrows with Moldavite arrowheads. Interesting. And uh, this was discovered, there were Moldavite amulets found uh, at the oldest site at which a goddess statue was ever found. And that was the ancient Venus of Willendorf statue. Mm -hmm. So that statue is the very big, voluptuous goddess of the earth. Right. And they, you know, that's the oldest one. 25,000 years ago is the oldest they found so far. And that had Moldavite all around it. Wow. So there's an indication, at least to me, Yes. that people who were in touch with the earth as goddess mm -hmm. were also in touch with Moldavite and recognized it as a spiritual stone Yes. before we had writing or anything else. Wow. So then in more recent history, in folklore, Moldavite was um, a uh, betrothal stone that uh, people believed, uh, in that part of the world, believed that it would give good luck to a relationship uh, bring harmony between the man and the woman. That was one of the folklore things. And, and another one was um, uh, protection. They felt like it would be a spiritually protective talisman for people. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they actually uh, also connected Moldavite. This was in the very first article I read by George Bruce. 
there is a legend in that part of the world that this uh, is the stone of the Holy Grail. Yes, that's right. And uh, for people who know, you know, not everything about the Holy Grail legend, um, the part that connects with Moldavite is that the Grail was not always thought to be a cup. Mm. You know, if you saw Indiana Jones and the Holy Grail, it was a cup. Yes. But in the legend uh, that was recounted by Wolfram von Eschenbach, the Grail legend, uh, he depicted that Moldavite was a stone. Mm. And he specifically called it an emerald that fell from the sky. Or that the Grail was a stone. What it, yeah, or that's what the Moldavite I, was a stone. Oh, well, uh, yeah, you're right. It was the Grail that was a stone. Thank you, Leo. Yes. Um, the Grail, I get excited and I get mixed up. The Grail stone was an emerald that fell from the sky. Yes. And that to even behold the stone would set the viewer on an accelerated spiritual path. Wow. And wow. would also not allow him to go the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And Parsifal in that story keeps trying to fall in love with the wrong woman. He does all these other things where he's going the wrong way. And the stone of the grail pulls him back. Interesting. So just the fact that he beheld it. So, you know, that to me is an interesting bit of lore too and connects a lot with the way that Moldavite seems to work. Yes. You know, it harmonizes relationships. Kathy and I gave each other Moldavite uh, pieces. We took one piece and cut it in half and po polished it mm -hmm. and we exchanged the halves, you know, when we mm -hmm. got married mm -hmm. as a kind of a symbol of being one heart. Um, Beautiful. And other people have done that too. And some of them who didn't ever hear about what we had done, it was spontaneous. Interesting, instinctive. Yeah. So anyway, you know, Moldavite was very much at the heart of heaven and earth, especially during, it still is, but it was kind of the central thing about us Yes. at the beginning of the first sort of three, four years of our business, even seven years. Mm -hmm. um, and so we went to channelers to find out, you know, what they would say about Moldavite and that material got into the book. I researched about the Holy Grail to see what those connections were. Yes. Um, so, you know, I was pretty excited by this time, but I still didn't feel crystals or mm. Moldavite mm. in terms of conscious, consciously. Yes. So Kathy did, my customers did, you know, I would watch them go, oh, this is the one, you know, and I would feel kind of jealous and a little bit spiritually, you know, retarded. Um, just because I, I couldn't do what they could do. At that point, I didn't disbelieve it. I wasn't skeptical about it anymore, but I wanted to feel it. Right. And then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there was a certain day, you know, Kathy had me meditating. She said, if you meditate, Bob, you'll get more sensitive. So I was meditating, and I was meditating every day. And for a while, because I thought more is better, I was meditating with literally with my hands in two piles of Moldavite, just like this. <laughs> and I was like, I'm trying so hard to feel something. And I couldn't, still didn't succeed. But there was, I finally gave up on that. And I got to where I just meditated with one stone in my hand in the mornings with a little music. And um, this, in fact, is the stone that I was meditating with. Wow. This is, this is my favorite piece of Moldavite and my oldest personal piece. Right. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit more about what this piece has done. Yeah. But um, this particular day when I meditated, I still, nothing ever happened when I meditated. You know, I would just be sitting there listening to the music. So I finally decided, if it's not going to happen by itself, I'm going to visualize something happening. Mm. So I visualized that I was going to go out of my body and fly around. So I got myself going out of my body and uh, you know just in my mind mm -hmm. and I imagined I could look down and see myself sitting there in the chair and I seemed to get a vivid picture of that so then I imagined that I was going up through the ceiling and then I was through the roof and then I could kind of look down on the neighborhood and then it kind of went a little higher and right around that point the meditation took off on its own mm -hmm. and I didn't direct it anymore consciously in terms of um, in terms of where I was going right but I d kept going up. I kept going up further and further into this into the sky. Now this was just my point of consciousness. You know, I was still aware that I had a body and I was there in the chair, but I was seeing things inwardly that were way up there in the stars. Mm. And I saw the whole earth and then I saw 
the moon go by and then I saw like the sun getting smaller and I was getting further and further away and I found myself out in the stars where I was just nothing but stars mm. and it was kind of wonderful out there you know and I became really you know completely absorbed in the in what I was seeing mm. so I saw a star that looked for some reason attractive to me I don't know why and I started thinking well maybe I could go over there and I found myself going over there so after a short time you know it had to be faster than light if it was the outer cosmos at a very short time I found myself uh, near that star and there was a big golden star and around that golden star there were there were little orbs that looked like little stars mm. like thousands of them and they were in a kind of an orbit procession around the big gold star and the, each one of them had a tiny little thread coming out of the center of it that attached it to the big star mm. in this vision and it was the thread was made out of gold light and the orbs were golden light and the star was gold light and somewhere about that point in the meditation I thought to myself I wonder what I look like here you know in this vision mm. so I sort of imagined my eyesight kind of looking down at myself and instead of a body there was a gold orb just like all the other ones mm. and a thread connecting to the big star Wow! at that point a voice said in my head the light you seek within the light you seek without is identical to the light within and at that point in the chair back where I was sitting uh, you know meditating there was a little the molevite was like sizzling in my hand it felt like and a, a like electrical charge went up my arm and right to my heart mm. and then when it got there my heart kind of went like light inside my chest went like that wow. and with that opening ecstatic joy and then the energy would move moved up and down at the same time so that all seven of what I now know as the chakras mm. were open so it kind of it was started here and it went and you know top of my head all the way down yeah and I felt like I could see inwardly light was circulating through that whole column of chakras mm. and each one of them was like a flower made out of light mm. inside me and I was absolutely enraptured you know it just felt you know it felt like being filled with divinity or something mm. and it also I, I say it as a joke in a joking way I felt like a pinball machine where somebody had won a free <laughs> game you know because it was just everything was lit up yes and Kathy upstairs getting ready for work could see could see inwardly or could feel I should say mm. that something was happening with me Wow so she came downstairs and said salt looked and looked at me across the living room and said Bob you're full of light I said I know Wow so there was a you know probably an hour of that state uh, and it slowly you know got a little bit softer and at that point uh, we, just, we decided well okay we can go to work so we went into work together and um, when I got to work I could feel every single stone in the store Wow. That was when I started feeling crystals. And it wasn't like a little, it was like every one of them full on, every one different. I could differentiate between each kind of stone. Mm -hmm. I could differentiate between one piece of amethyst and another. Yes. You know, all of the things that all those customers had been talking about were suddenly going on in me. And it was, you know, catalyzed by that meditation experience and that sizzling piece of moldavite in my hand. I have to say that that's exactly what happened to me after that activation with Moldavite. Like I came to your guy's shop in Gloucester and had the same thing. It was like it was like having another sense. I walked in that shop and every single stone had a different feeling, a different texture, a different tone, a different vibration. I didn't even know what vibration was right. then, you know. And it was it was amazing. It was like being ushered into another language. You know, yeah. That's what I felt like, a language that I've continued to be able to speak by feeling you mm -hmm. know, for ever since then. And it opened up and it never really went away. Wow. Yeah, well, it, mine never went away either. And it enabled 
me to do a lot more with stones. I mean, it enabled me to really talk from my own experience to people in the shop. Right. And to then begin writing about stones, you know, in our newsletter, mm -hmm. which eventually led, you know, after the Moldavite book, um, because I, I believe it's true that when, the, when I had the Moldavite book, in my writing of that, I hadn't yet really opened up yet. Mm. So my writing was more scholarly in the sense of reporting things, right? Rather than, um, you know, rather than saying what my experience was. But now I could do that, right? Right. Um, so, you know, off we went, and on, and the the whole for s quite a few years, and still going on really, but for probably six years from when we started, there was a Moldavite kind of a, a rush for Moldavite among the metaphysical community. Right, right. Um, and it's still one of the most beloved stones. You know, I, I'm, every time I do the Tucson show or any show, mm. there are a good number of people that come and say, ah, I just love Moldavite. Or they tell me their story of how they had an awakening. Yes. Um, and it's really, uh, you know, it's gratifying. I really, I really feel like that feeling of destiny that I had that very first day when I read the magazine article mm -hmm. has unfolded since then and it really was destiny. Yes. You know, because my life was all about what happened after reading that and as a result of reading that article. Yes. And, you know, the book was popular. Through that book we met many people that were really instrumental in helping us go further. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was the it was the pivotal piece in our marriage, you know, and our business and everything just kind of yes. orbited around what Moldavite started. Yes. So it's, it's wow. dear to my heart and it's something that, um, you know, it's probably the stone I recommend the most frequently. Right. Especially to people that are getting started with all this. Right. Um, because it's, um, it's the stone that jumpstarts your life. You know, is one way of saying it. Yes. Um, so. Well, that's that's an amazing story, and I mean, there's certainly many more that you could tell. But I think at this point, the next question that I have is, you know, now, like right now, and mm -hmm. at this time, for people and all that you've seen and heard from people, you know, what do you feel like today's report is on Moldavite? You know, right now and moving forward. Uh, well, um, in some ways, I mean, as far as what's happening today, it's very much like what happened at the beginning, but it's happening to a lot more people. Mm. Um, you know, Moldavite is well known now. I don't really, I'm not, for a long time, we were the only ones who had it. Right. And we were the ones who popularized it in a way. Um, but it's now got its own momentum going, and there are lots of uh, people uh, who are distributing Moldavite, you know, uh, either I either in Czech Republic or or over here. Right. And uh, one of the things that happened is there was a sort of a gold rush for Moldavite in the Czech Republic because of the popularity that got started here. Yes. And many people went digging for it, and you know, whole companies over there blossomed out of it. Mm. And people, this was it was still communist when we started. So, you know, a lot of people who didn't have any house or any car or anything like that because everybody during the communist years was really rationed in terms of any kind of amount of money that they had. Yes, that's right. Um, it's, it became a kind of closet capitalism over there. Mm. And, you know, there were a lot of houses bought and cars bought and people that found their own lives unfolding through their connection as, wow. as, as people that were harvesting Moldavite out of the earth. Yes. So there's that, and then there's all the spiritual interested people in America, and now it's really popular in China. Mm -hmm. It's been really popular in Japan for uh, over 20 years. Right. So it's worldwide. Yes. You know, I, I know uh, people in Dubai that are Moldavite dealers, and people in England. Um, so it's... Moldavite's energy of transformative change and evolutionary acceleration has touched many, many thousands of people, mm -hmm. and they're just all still talking about it to each other and to other people that they meet. Yes. So, you know, in that sense, I'd say that's the Moldavite report 
for today yes had started with only Kathy and I even had any right you know other right. than a few mineral dealers who had them as curiosities as an oddity. yes to you know I don't know how many thousand people now right and so in a certain way I think it's a force in the world in terms of spiritual evolution yes you know Moldavite is a sort of being you know one of the things I believe and that I write about now is that stones should be viewed as beings, as, you know, not encased in just one body, but Moldavite as a being is encased in all these pieces yes. and expresses through all those pieces. Yes. And its own selfhood is in the invisible side of things, is in the spiritual realm. Mm. Um, so Moldavite as a being has blossomed in the world in the last 26 years. Yes. Yes. Um, so that's another interesting thing to me, and kind of something I really am just seeing right now as we talk about it. Yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful realization and image. You know, and I, I would talk about a couple of other things that, you know, anecdotes about Moldavite. Yes. Maybe not my own so much, but. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I've noticed that people feel from Moldavite, there are some people who get a strong connection right in the heart with Moldavite. It's a heart-oriented stone. Uh -huh. And as a stone of the grail, it would make sense that it is. Right. Um, and we saw a phenomenon early on in the Moldavite um, years uh, of what we started calling the Moldavite flush, uh -huh. where you know somebody would hold a piece of Moldavite and they would suddenly feel really hot and their face would get red and, it would, and then they would have often an emotional release too. So tears, um, you know, sometimes laughter, mm -hmm. but it would just be a big emotional release that went with that, that heart energizing and then the flush. Right. And so that's an interesting phenomenon. You know, there's, because it happens so many times, it's a real thing that Moldavite seems to do. Right. You know, with a percentage of people. And, you know, and the other thing, of course, I said is that transformative effect seems to happen. Yes, and I've seen that with many friends, people I've worked with, you know, working in the crystal business, that even if they know the reputation of Moldavite, it doesn't really prepare them for the actuality of That's how right. it affects their lives. That's and right. It's, it's almost comical sometimes to see. Oh, I know. You know, how Moldavite will change somebody's life. They're going through something really transformative and maybe even difficult, but ultimately delivering them to the right place mm -hmm. and they don't even realize it and I'll be there as a witness going ah uh, didn't you get that Moldavite like two or three weeks ago uh huh yeah that's good that's good well you know maybe we should like um, I want you to try on this necklace yes you know this is what we call I'd call a power piece for mm -hmm. Moldavite you know it's a necklace of all raw stones yes um, and I've made many of these I have my original one that I made for myself 25 years ago mm -hmm. and I've just made it to d be able to demonstrate to people what Moldavite's energy felt like right because it seemed like if I put a whole lot of it on them even if they were not uh, normally sensitive to crystals they might feel this right and many many of them did right um, and so for some people it's a bit overwhelming to wear this much of it but but why don't you give it a try Yes, I do this sparingly. Uh -huh. This one, I gotta say, while we talked, yes. you know, this is a very big piece. It's my new favorite, mm -hmm. and so it's really new for me. Um, it's so strong that that this whole part of my body is just like vibrating and hot, and mm -hmm. um, it's it's. Um, I guess I should say that you know, wearing a great big piece, or even this this way, wearing a lot of it. Yes. Um, it's not necessarily for people to wear all the time. Right. You know, because it can be overwhelming. Yes. And, uh, you know, even as much as I love this piece, it's so powerful, I really have to take it off. Right. Which I'm going to do. <laughs> yes. Well, with this, I feel an immediate, every time I've ever put one of these necklaces on, it's like there's an energetic weight to it that's way beyond what it physically weighs because it's actually fairly light. But it's like this immediate full-bodied physical energetic experience mm -hmm. and you know I'm feeling 
it's almost like my blood pressure is rising mm -hmm. right now. I mean, it's very uh, noticeable. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, of course I know that. I'm just saying it for, you know, for them, people yeah. out there watching this and imagining if you're sensitive to energies what this would feel like. And it's definitely, talk about a jump starter. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's that <laughs> this, definitely this is, is that. This is definitely a jump starter. In terms of, um, and, you know, as it turned out, um, I, w I wasn't only going to have a Moldavite necklace for a demonstrator because as soon as I made one, people wanted it. Right. So I bet we've made, you know, three or four hundred of these in the 26 years that we've been doing this. And wow. all but four or five of them are, have homes. You right. Know. right. So it's something that has been, uh, people love it. Yes. Um, yeah, I've only ever heard very, very positive things yeah. from people who connect with them. I mean, there are, I would say this, you know, in terms of um, full disclosure, yes. um, there are some people who feel Moldavite is too strong for them. Absolutely. And, and, they, and they tend to say, you know, I just can't handle that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Percentage-wise, in my observation of it over the years, you know, it's less than 5%. Yeah, that sounds And I would say right. like more than 80, per, well, you know, well more than half, like more than two thirds of the people that I show Moldavite like it, feel it, enjoy what it feels like. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the pro and, and there's a certain percentage who don't immediately feel it and have a response. Right, exactly. And then there's that tiny percentage who feel like it's too much for them. Right. But that's, that's good for people to know because if people are hearing this, and they're one of the ones that feels overwhelmed by it. They don't want, I don't want them to feel like they're wrong. Right. And that's one thing that I've told people over the years and, you know, dealing in Moldavite myself or teaching about Moldavite. It's, it's a stone that's either for you or it's not, it seems, mm -hmm. even more than most other stones. It's and not like, I mean, you can love it. It can be totally transformative. You can go, wow, I really feel that, but it's not really my thing all the way to the other end of the spectrum and I tell people you know it's important to to know that and honor that mm -hmm. and there are people who get totally passionate about it not just me and you right who get big collections of it and can't you know want more and more of it well I joke you know myself that there is no such thing as too much Moldavite hence uh -huh. here yep. we are I'm in my element <laughs> here so Kathy is an example of somebody who was very sensitive and couldn't be with it all the time at first. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just to, qua just to really go th to the last detail of describing how people respond to this. Yes. Sensitive people may find that they can't be with it for a long time mm -hmm. at first. And if you give it a little time and you just take it in small doses, mm. a, a sensitive person becomes acclimated to it too. Yes. I find most of the time that's true. Yes. And Kathy now wears it all the time every day interesting um, so it is something that can grow on you or you can get connected with more gradually if you're sensitive and it feels like too strong to wear all day the first day you get it yes yeah that's a really good point yeah so gosh you know oh I know what I was gonna say yes. so here's some of the weird behaviors that Moldavite has exhibited oh, yes. besides everything else I talked about this piece of Moldavite my original piece my my uh, my talisman mm -hmm. um, has a habit of going on sabbatical. Yes. Um, it. I'm absolutely convinced that it disappears and reappears somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and that's. I, I've never had another stone that I could say that about. It's not something that happens commonly. Yes. Even in my world. Yes. Um, and this one, the classic time that it happened. There's two. I was early on. I was in the store. Uh, with Kathy one day we were opening up the store that day and um, a person uh, came into shop and they were looking at Moldavite and they said uh, I lost my Moldavite you know I don't know I left it I know exactly where I left it and it's gone and I said well maybe it's on sabbatical because you know I have this Moldavite piece that disappears and then a few weeks later I find it I'll leave it on the dresser it'll show up in my jacket pocket you know things like that and I said, currently, it's on sabbatical. My piece is not here right now. I don't know where it is, but I expect it'll come back. Well, right at that time, Kathy was opening the safe to get our, our little cash envelope out for the day. 
And as she was opening the safe, you know, the woman was talking to me. Kathy got the safe, the money envelope out, and she said, "What's this lump?" And she unzipped the money envelope, which was inside a locked safe, and there was this moldavite. Wow. And there is no way we put it in the money envelope, you know. Yeah. So that was, and it was right at the right time because I had just told somebody about the nature, about the way it goes on sabbatical. Yes. So she was amazed. I was amazed. You know, we were all pretty, pretty excited about that. This one did that a number of other times. Mm. And then there was a period when we moved to Vermont from uh, Massachusetts where we started. And um, it was missing for 14 years. And I thought for sure, for sure it's gone, you know. And uh, we were getting rid of some old clothes at one point. We were cleaning out closets uh, here in Vermont. And I was uh, getting out. I saw a pair of pants that I'd never worn. It still had the labels on it. And I thought, well, I can't throw these away or give them away if I don't at least try them on. So I started to try the pants on. There was a lump in the pocket of the pants that I had never put on before. And it was this guy. Wow. So, you know, wow. that's an interesting phenomenon in my life. And I've heard about it from a lot of Moldavite people I, over the years. I have too. I mean, there's no other stone that I've ever heard those kind of stories about, but like Moldavite. It's yeah. really incredible. And many, many people, actually. There was a, there was a Harvard psychologist uh, named, or psychiatrist named John Mack, who wrote several books about um, alien abductions and mm -hmm. the phenomenon of people having that experience. He had Moldavites disappear and reappear. And he actually came to me and interviewed me about it because he was going to be writing about that in one of his books. Interesting. Uh, and he had several people in his um, in his group of people that he consulted with about his uh, books on the alien stuff, mm -hmm. who had Moldavites uh, and who had this experience, including one Moldavite showed up that nobody owned. Wow. You know, it wasn't somebody right. that lost and came right. back. It was right. a brand new one that showed up. So, you Amazing. know, I have no explanation for it. Yep, you know, I don't, I don't have, I wish I could say I understood what that's about. Right. But I find it fascinating. Definitely. And so, you know, this is a, this is a mysterious and powerful and amazing stone. And I do think that it connects heaven and earth. Yes. Uh, I should say that one of the things when, when the scientific people are trying to say, trying to make the theory of what Moldavite actually is. Mm -hmm. There are some theories that believe that these are little meteorites that actually fell separately, you know, in one, at one time, like it was a shower, mm -hmm. and all in the same place. The more prevalent scientific theory, meaning more scientists believe it, is that Moldavite uh, was formed when a big meteorite hit the Earth and Fused with earth, fused the earthly rock, fused with the earthly rock. I mean to say, yes. Uh, and actually, was so hot, the explosion was so powerful. They calculate that the crater, at the crater where the meteorite hit, where moldavite was formed, that the explosive force was six trillion megatons, stronger than all the atom bombs on Earth by a lot. All at once, wow. went right through the Earth's crust into the molten core of the planet. And so that a big portion of the original meteorite is in the heart of the Earth. Oh, wow. And only a little bit of it spewed out into the air. I didn't know this yeah, yeah. part of the story. And so the, you know, the vaporized stone, whether all meteoric or whether meteorite mixed with earthly rock, mm -hmm. no one knows that answer. Right. Um, you know, the, as the explosion hit, you know, like it was so hot, the rock itself vaporized, right? That vapor in the explosion went way, way up into the stratosphere. Mm -hmm. And then as it started coming down, it started cooling. Right. And it went from vapor to liquid. Wow. So moldavite, and that's the reason that some of them look like droplets. This is a bit of a droplet-shaped right. moldavite. Right. If it would, if it, the original piece that this was would have had a long, skinny tail, you know, coming up. Whoop, coming up from there right and that part apparently broke off when the thing landed so all we have is the front end of the droplet interesting but that was gas liquid droplet 
hits the earth and finally cools enough to be solid right. glassy material which is what moldavite is right and uh, you know it's an amorphous crystal that's another thing to say about it it is um most of the crystals like a quartz crystal all the other crystals have a lattice that's what makes them crystals the molecules yes. are aligned in very well defined angles mm -hmm. moldavite is an amorphous meaning without shape crystal right. so that the uh, it has no lattice the molecules mm -hmm. align every which way right and that actually may have you know in my mind something to do with why moldavite's energies are so unique yes so you know it's um, it's it and oh I should say too when that meteoric crash happened and moldavite was created the Earth's magnetic poles shifted as a result of the infusion of whatever that meteorite was into the liquid core of the Earth. It changed the uh, flow of the liquid center of the Earth in a way wow. that reversed the magnetic poles. And that's not intuitive information or channeled, that's right. scientific information I actually got from the New York Times when I was researching the Moldavite book. Interesting. So again, powerful not only for you and me right. when we hold a piece but the arrival of moldavite was a big moment geophysically right. in the history of the earth right so you know it's got a lot of mystery about it and a lot of what is known about it is extraordinary yes and there's not very much of it yes because people ask me about that you know so is moldavite really getting rarer and rarer you know there's only a few, according to what's been estimated, there was at one point there was estimated there were maybe one or two tons of moldavite pieces on the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Which I should repeat, it's not all over the earth, it's just in that 60 square kilometers where the meteoric uh, strewn field is. Yes. Um, but uh, now maybe it's maybe three or four tons have been discovered in all of history. So compared to any gemstone, even diamond, it's right. a tiny amount. Right. And it's finite. And, and it's finite. Whereas that's what I tell people, natural stones may be found somewhere somewhere else on the earth someday. Whereas this is not, which is even another unique thing about that's it. That's right. There's no such thing as a vein of moldavite. Yes. It's it's yes. piece here, piece there, piece here, piece there, in the sandy soil in the Bohemian Plateau of the Czech Republic. Yes. And people dig down um, as much as 20 or 30 feet in this sandy ground to find moldavites. Mm. But it doesn't occur any deeper than that. Right. So, and there is no one place where you find a lot other than scattered in that one area. Right. I've been there and seen the, um, the, the, the pits that people have dug. Mm -hmm. In fact, my other talisman, this one. Oh yeah, that's right. right. When I went to the Czech Republic with Kathy a few years ago, um, we went out to the fields with a, a friend uh, who guided us around and showed us where things were. Mm -hmm. And we found one hole where there were two uh, men digging for moldavite. And one of them was down in the hole about 20 feet. And the other one was up at the top pulling out the buckets of sand. Mm -hmm. And the man in the bottom of the hole, we, you know, we, my, our guide spoke to them in Czech and said, have you found anything? And they had just, just before we got there, found one piece of moldavite. And it was this. Oh, wow. So, you know, they brought it up out of the hole wow. and showed it to me, and it was all covered with mud and stuff. And uh, so I was the second or third person to ever see it. Right. And it's, um, wow. you know, it's a very fine, ar finely articulated piece. It has beautiful little and very crevices. Thick. It's nice and thick. It's yes. heavy. It's probably 30 grams. Yes. The biggest piece of moldavite in the world is only 200 grams. 234 or something like that so about the size of a tangerine right um, maybe small tangerine and um, that's not like other stones either you know moldavite comes from microscopic size up to that a big moldavite very rare would be a hundred grams right and anything over 20 grams is rare right so but I wanted to show like, this is my very first piece here in my right hand Yes. And this is my talisman that I found when I went to the land of Moldavite and, you know, found that man digging. Right. And they're almost the same size and shape. Yes. They're a beautiful match. They're, pair. I know. They are, they are a pair. And I get a lot of pleasure out of that. Mm. 
Yeah. We once found a, a pair, speaking of pairs, we bought a big batch of Moldavite, Kathy and I, and we were sorting it out. Which ones were we going to cut? Which ones were we going to sell as they are? Which ones would we make necklaces out of and so forth? Mm -hmm. And there was a pair of Moldavites that, abs that fit into each other. They had actually originally been one stone. Yes. And they were, you know, but they it had broken. Right. But it wasn't a sharp break like recent. Mm -hmm. It had all of the little texturized edges, just like all the other ones do. Right. So it was two pieces that were w originally one that had been scattered somehow, you know, and then sold in a big batch of Moldavite. And we happened to, to find notice them. it. She noticed yes. that, you know, those two pieces fit together. So that's one of the big treasures of our collection. Wow. And we do collect it, you know, it's it's one of those things that we're like the other people who love Moldavite, we kind of can't stop yes. finding pieces and keeping them. Yes, I've noticed that myself. Yeah. So I don't know, I think I've said a lot of what I wanted to say. Yeah, I think that is a beautiful summation of what I've, stories I've heard you say, some things that I've heard that even read in that book so many years ago, but forgot. So it's a great perspective because I found that this is a stone that's very fascinating to a lot of people. I mm -hmm. mean, and all of these details I think are really, you know, excellent to be able to share. Well, thanks. You know, and I sh should tell you, and I bet you know, Heaven and Earth as a company was named because we felt that Moldavite was the stone that embodied both Heaven and Earth. Yes, that's right. And also, because of what Kathy felt about the light coming down, mm -hmm. being grounded because of Moldavite's catalytic effect on us. Yes. That Moldavite was the stone that could bring heaven and earth together. Yes. Which is our mission, in a way, is to always have that intention of bringing the spiritual world and the physical world into conjunction so that they're one world. Yes. And w I've always felt that Moldavite is one of the most important stones um, for that mission. Yes. All right. So if you've watched this far, thanks for being here with us. We really enjoyed talking about Moldavite today.